Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for another reading lesson. Today I have a new expository nonfiction book for you, and it's about deserts. So before we get into this, let's just think to ourselves, what do we already know about deserts? And what do you wonder? What do you want to know? Think to yourself or tell somebody that's nearby. We're gonna get into the table of contents here. We're gonna see there's quite a few different chapters. So we're not gonna read all of them today. You can see chapter one is all about dry land and chapter two are desert plants. We're gonna cover those chapters today. The next day we'll start on chapter three about desert animals and then we'll carry on through people in the desert and desert field guide and a scientist at work. All right, so chapter one, it's gonna start out on page four. Okay, chapter one, a dry land. A camel slowly walks across the hot, dry sand. Sunshine blazes down on the camel's rider. The wind blows the sand around them into giant dunes. The rider sips water, but the camel will travel many miles before it needs to take a drink. Its body is made to live in a land where water is hard to find. Animals like the camel are suited to live in the harsh conditions of a desert. The world's deserts are the driest places on earth. Deserts get less than 10 inches or 25 centimeters of rain each year. Desert air is so dry, raindrops often evaporate before they reach the ground. There's a caption over here. It says camels use fat stored in humps on their backs when they need to go without food and water. Okay, well, what questions can you ask right now? You might have to just say them out loud or tell somebody or tell a stuffed animal. What questions could you ask about this desert or camels right now? Okay. This next section is about the desert biome. Let's start up here with this caption so we can find out a little bit more about this picture. The Atacama Desert in South America is the driest place on earth. Rain might fall only once every 20 years. All right, the desert biome. In the desert biome, a community of unique plants and animals have adapted to the dry climate. Desert plants and animals depend on each other for survival. Desert plants provide shelter and food for desert animals. Animals help plants by spreading their seeds through the desert. But some deserts have such harsh conditions that almost no plants and animals live there. This map up here, we go back to our list here. We're finally gonna be getting down here to some um, text features that we haven't covered yet, diagrams and maps. There's an, here's an example of one of those from our chart, desert areas. It says, where are deserts? So here it lists them all, Africa, Antarctica, Arctic areas, Asia, Australia, North America, and South America and South America, and then all the spots in yellow, like this is Antarctica, we've got Australia over here, there's where some deserts are, here's some in Africa, got Asia's over here, South America, North America, and Antarctica. Deserts can be cold or hot. 
Antarctica is a cold desert. Temperatures stay far below freezing in the winter. Thick fur or feathered, thick fur or feathers protect animals from the cold. In hot deserts, animals hide under rocks or in holes during the day. Plants have adapted to hot deserts too. The leaves of some desert trees curl up during the hottest parts of the day and they save water this way. Okay, so before we turn the page, let's stop and think now. What questions can you ask now? Get as many different questions as you can come up with, either with yourself or with someone nearby. Okay, we're going to move on to chapter two. Chapter two is all about um, desert plants. Splash. Raindrops splatter on the desert. Desert plants have waited months, maybe even years for the rain. Rain brings life to the desert. After a few days, hidden seeds start to sprout. Soon spiky spin effects, grasses pop up from the ground. Cactuses soak up as much water as they can. In just a month, wildflowers cover desert hillsides. Bright blossoms spread out from thorny cactuses. Bees zip between flowers. An antelope nibble on new green leaves. Here are those grasses that come up. This says it's octillo. And bright yellow flowers burst open on a prickly pear cactus. Saving water. Because rain is so rare in the desert, plants must store water. Prickly cactuses have ways to live in the desert. Shallow roots spread out to collect water across a wide area of the ground. Hard waxy skin holds in water. Sharp spines keep thirsty animals away. Here's a fact. It says the yucca plant is food for many desert dwellers. Jackrabbits nibble their leaves. Gophers, gophers eat their roots. Birds and mice snatch up yucca seeds. This big picture in the middle, it says cigarros and other cactuses are a type of succulent plant. Succulents store water. Over here, this caption says, the Nara plant grows in the dry Namib desert. The bushes roots store water. In Africa's Namib desert, small leafless bushes dot the brown rocky ground. The twisted gray branches make the plant look dead, but they aren't. They live in this harsh land. To live in this harsh land, the Nara plant has thick roots deep underground that store water. Okay, so now we've read even more about desert, desert plants. What questions do you have now? It's important to come up with questions as we read because as readers, one way that we learn to take in information is by listening to what we've read rereading if necessary and then trying to think of all the different questions that we could come up with around the same topic. All right, let's continue. We're going to stop after page 13. Finding water. Water in the desert doesn't last long. Blistering heat and sunshine quickly evaporate the water. Tree leaves shrivel and die once the water is gone, but the dead leaves on the Joshua tree don't fall off. The leaves shade the trunk and keep it from dying in the hot sun. Here's the caption for the Joshua tree. The, a Joshua tree grows tall in the Mojave Desert in Western United States. This is a mesquite tree and um, you can see the seed pods and cactus fruit. 
Here's a desert mouse. He's scurrying across the hot sand. He's searching for food, for seeds to eat. It says desert life changes during the dry season. Seed pods and fruit take the place of bright flowers. Desert animals eat plants to give them enough water to survive until the next rainfall. Tortoises munch on juicy cactus fruits. The dry seed pods of a mesquite tree rustle in the wind and drop on the ground. A field mouse snatches up a pod. Seeds in the pod have water locked inside their smooth shells. Okay, let's think. What questions do you have now? Okay, when we finish the book on the next day, some of your questions might get answered and we might have to go, you know, to Google to get all of your questions answered. You might want to write down some of the questions that you had about deserts today and keep that in a safe spot so that you can bring it out for part two when we finish this book. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to get a great nonfiction book, magazine, article, internet, something, something nonfiction to read, if at all possible. If you don't have anything nonfiction, then of course find a great fiction book and get comfortable and it's someplace quiet that you can focus. Remember, at least 25 minutes of independent reading. Of course you can do more. Have a good day.